Hole in one or hole in none. PGA Tour Commissioner Jay Monahan said or had this to say when asked about the public's expected perception of the organization's merger with Saudi funded Live Golf this week. You think they're going to respond positively? I mean, you're describing a scenario under which PIF at some point could have the majority of the economics, mm -hmm. correct me if I'm wrong, of okay. this entity. Essentially, the Saudis sort of people will say, oh, they control golf around the world. I'm just curious as to what you think the response is going to be. Well, listen, a lot of people have been reading about the tension um, and that we've talked a lot. Um, and I said previously that we were going down our path. They were going down theirs. And today that tension goes away. The litigation is dropped. We're announcing to the world that on behalf of this game, we're coming together. And it's, it's less about how people respond today, and it's all about how people respond in 10 years. And when they see the impact that we're having on this game together, there will be a lot of smiles on people's faces, and there'll be a lot more people playing this game all over the world. And if you're a young player that wants to get to the highest level of the game today, you'll be more inspired than you've ever been. An organization that represents families of 9-11 victims tore into the PGA's Tuesday decision to merge with the Saudi-backed group. The 9-11 Families United group released a statement saying the tour and Monaghan are hypocrites who have become, quote, paid Saudi shills. And the group members said they were shocked and deeply offended by the announcement. Live Golfer tweeted, Phil Mickelson said, awesome day today in response to the news. And former President Donald Trump wrote, great news for golf, a big, beautiful, glamorous deal for the wonderful world of golf. Congrats to all on Truth Social. Reactions from other golfers have seemingly been mixed. Pro-Canadian golfer Mackenzie Hughes tweeted this week, nothing like finding out through Twitter that we're merging with a tour that we said we'd never do that with. And American player Dylan Wu wrote, tell me why Jay Monahan basically got a promotion to CEO of all golf in the world by going back on everything he said the past two years, the hypocrisy. Wish golf worked like that. I guess money always wins at PGA Tour. Hmm. So. so the indignation is pretty uh, righteous. Uh, what do you think about <laughs> this is this uh should we all be you know waving the the kind of bloody shirt of 9-11 over this no i don't think this this has much to do with 9-11 at all i think that there's a lot of there are a lot of countries that we do business with right. for various things maybe it's just the overlap of people who have relatives who work in finance in the world trade center that also have a love of golf that's making this more of a thing well the saudis there. are despicable but I mean, this, the Saudi yeah. government, the, yeah. their complicity in terrorism, their treatment of their, you know, their their treatment of Khashoggi, the press freedom, you know, everything. Mm -hmm. So let's not, you know, we should be clear eyed about that. But we've get we've cooperated with them. Yeah. President Joe Biden fist bumped the with the mm -hmm. Saudis. Right. Uh, so what's the like, what's the problem? I, I guess this feels a little um, actually Glenn Greenwald pointed this out. Let's put that tweet up there. He mm -hmm. tweets that the self-righteous rage over golfers taking Saudi money was always hilarious, given the U.S. and the U.K. are and always have been the key sponsors and protectors of Saudi despots. Now that they're all merged, it's so funny that all those posturing golf pundits have to cover the PGA. Uh, yeah, right. The 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 um, the administrations, uh, bipartisan administrations, have sought Saudi approval and relationships there. So if it's good enough for the U.S. government, uh, well, what's the, why can it, uh, for, for what reason uh, can you get mad at the PGA? Yeah, we were pretty chill about taking Saudi oil when mm -hmm. we had to, you know, shuffle where we were getting oil from mm -hmm. when there was a war that broke out in Ukraine because of the Russian invasion. But there wasn't an outcry from families of 9-11 victims that were like, we can't have any deals with the Saudis Only the government. Oil. It may do, may do dis, uh, sketchy right. things with unsavory. Not our beloved Gulf corporations. Golf. Maybe, well, maybe that's true because the U.S. <laughs> government is already so tainted yeah. based on the the malicious <laughs> practices of our foreign policy establishment. Mm -hmm. But golf is still pure. We'd and expect whole. that from you, but not the PGA. Not the golfers. Yeah. I can understand the golfers being mad, right? Yeah. Because. PGA was like a jealous boyfriend, and they're like, you have to pick one. You can either mm -hmm. play for Liv in their tournament, or you can play for the PGA. And a lot of golfers turned down a lot of Saudi money, and they said, no, we're actually going to stick with you, the PGA. 
do they get any <laughs> anything for, for staying loyal to the PGA? No, they turned down that money. And so that puts the players in a, a really tough position. It sounds like this deal came together so fast that the PGA nor Liv consulted with antitrust lawyers. Mm-hmm. So it sounds like Congress is going to have to grant an exception for this merger. It's, it's a monopoly on golf. That's what this mm-hmm. merger is. Is it a merger and a monopoly that will increase competition only among the, the golfers, the players that now get to play against each other mm-hmm. that formerly were not able to when they had to pick? But this is a monopoly situation, this merger. So do you think there, should, there could be action from the U.S. government to stop it? Yeah, I really do. On those really on, do. Not on national security or on terrorism grounds, but on, on pure economic grounds. I think there might be some political motivations. Because I'm against that, Yeah, there, I mean, as you know. I'm there could the be US political government. motivations behind, all right, we're going to move forward with this right. antitrust. You well, know, they'll, 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 their real concern will be, right, the, the national security concern or the terrorism right. concern, but they'll pretend it's an economic concern. Right, because there are so many cases where antitrust law should theoretically be applied, mm-hmm. but they choose not to mm-hmm. because it's under the purview of whatever the administration's top antitrust lawyer is, which time and again, they decide not to take action when we have these major mergers. In this case, we might see some action taken because of people's beliefs about the Saudis. Glenn Greenwald continues, that said, maybe someone can get better talking points for the poor golfers other than nobody's perfect when asked <laughs> about the Saudis' role in things like 9-11, executing dissidents, carpet bombing Yemen, and uh, chopping up cotton. Columnists asked the State Department they know how to justify it and, uh, you know, citing the Obama administration's um, mm-hmm. weapons sales to, again, to Saudi Arabia, a, a, a nation we have absolutely cooperated with in the past for some, you know, larger national security concerns, alleged national security concerns. Um, but uh, but I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not particularly against doing, um, doing business with companies or for organizations or countries that aren't perfect because if we go down that logic you eventually you just have no relationships with anyone because no one including the US government itself right. is perfect and when people really stand on you know moral principle they're just very open to hypocrisy you know, the the age old like you know people who are like well we won't do business in the state of Indiana because it supports religious freedom or something and we're concerned about LGBT discrimination but that, that's not going to stop us from doing business with countries where it's like literally illegal to be gay. Like that kind of, <laughs> yeah. you know, uh, age old example. Of, and then there's a million other things like that. Um, I, I just think that doesn't really get you anywhere. So it, it's, it's hard to take taking that kind of stand easily opens itself up to hypocrisy. It is very easy for the American public to have righteous anger about what the Saudis have done when they're kept wholly ignorant of what the United States has done abroad. Right. True. My concern here is a monopoly on golf necessarily a bad thing. I think there are monopolies that maybe the antitrust division of the DOJ could focus on, and that would be a better use of their time than golf, than the PGA Tour and the Live Tour. It does seem that people are more willing to overlook a brutal regime that's committed many human rights violations and what the Saudis have been up to. If they're getting millions of dollars to do the one thing that they love, it seems that people will you know, kind of overlook the bad things that they've done. But the players that have turned down the live money that are now absolved Mm -hmm. by live, people are saying the Saudis now run golf in the world. What happens to those players? There has to be some kind of compensation. What are they to do in this situation? Mm. Yeah, they have uh, they have some some reason to be a little frustrated. They're learning that having morals doesn't pay, apparently, which is a tough lesson. (sighs) Tough lesson. All got to learn that at some point. More rising right after this. (laughs) 